How do you model a complex domain? Well, if you're thinking about domain-driven design, you're probably thinking of entities, value objects, and aggregates. But how do you define those? What's driving that decision? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I'm gonna explain what I think is a common approach to modeling that I think is backwards. Let me explain. I wanna thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So this is pretty typical. When we're thinking about our system, we're designing and we have these entities, value objects, we kind of have this cluster of related entities, we define what a root is, there's our aggregate. And we do this all over our entire system. We define all these entities, all these different aggregate roots. What's driving us to make these decisions about what these aggregate roots are, what an entity is, what are the value objects? To illustrate what I think is a common approach to creating aggregates, but I actually think it's kind of backwards, I'm gonna recreate an example from a video that I watched on YouTube. This video was recommended to me by a member of my channel. If you're interested in joining my channel, check the link in the description. So the domain being used as the example is a dinner hosting platform. So that means that you can host dinners, have guests reserve, etc. These are the entities defined in the example. We have user, guest, menu, dinner, host, reservation, bill, menu review, and guest rating. So how do we even define what these entities are? Well, like I mentioned at the very beginning, this is a dinner hosting platform. So we've probably had some process modeling involved of, okay, well, we're having these dinners, we're gonna have guests reserve, et cetera. And then we started picking out what the nouns were, what the entities are, and that's where we established this at. So a common approach is to start thinking about the relationships to define what this aggregate boundary is, which I actually think is backward. So let's go through kind of what a typical scenario is, and I'll explain why I think it's backward. So let's look at menu as the example. So if you're thinking about menu, maybe that could be an aggregate root, and we have different hosts, a collection of them associated to a menu potentially, because they have, they're hosting different dinners, and a dis dinner would be associated to the menu. I don't have it listed here, but obviously you'd have items on the menu, as well as people, the guests, could provide a review of the menu, and you'd have a collection of those. And we just keep going with this. We look at another entity. Let's look at the dinner. Well, if the dinner were the root, it would have a host associated to it, it would have a menu associated to it, and it would have a collection of reservations. And we just keep going. Now we're looking at a guest. What would a guest look like if it were the root? Well, we would have different menu reviews, like I mentioned. We would have different bills. We'd have different reservations associated to a guest. And a guest could have guest ratings that the host would probably do saying whether they were a good guest or not. So the next step in this is then looking at all these aggregate roots, I'm really only displaying three just to illustrate this, is looking where there's duplicates. So if we're looking at this aggregate where the menu's the root, well, we have a dinner entity here, but it's actually the aggregate root of this aggregate over here, and we can't have that. So we then have to have some type of identifier that that's how we're gonna reference it. So instead of having the actual dinner uh, entity here, we just have an ID referencing the aggregate root, this entity here. Then we just do that for, we go through every aggregate and do this. And we replace with identifiers everywhere that we had an entity that's actually an aggregate root somewhere else. So what's the issue with this approach? And why do I think it's backward? Well, I've kind of been dancing around the language I've been using and I'm trying not to actually kind of give away that a lot of times I've been referring to, well, you host the dinner and guests make reservations, and I'm actually talking about the behaviors, the actions of the actual system. But if you're just looking at the entities, you wouldn't really know any of that exists. You have no idea what are the actual behaviors. So if you were to take an aggregate that we've defined, like this menu, it's the root, it has a host ID, dinner IDs, menu IDs, an item, and we look at kind of what this data structure would look like, I have the name, some other stuff like the description, maybe the average rating, we're denormalizing some data there, our list of items and everything else. So this is what we're actually looking at of what we're kind of going by is we're first now defining what the data is based off this structure that we've created of what this aggregate looks like. And that is backward because the behaviors are ultimately what determine the data you're encapsulating in your entities and within your aggregate. And then it's typical that if you're defining data first, the behaviors that you end up implementing are really just more driven around CRUD and adding and updating and deleting the relationships. So we've had this data, we start implementing code, 
it's okay, you can create a menu, you can add a dinner, you can remove a dinner, update an item, etc. So if we jump back to this slide at the very beginning, and again, there was more aggregates in this if you were to work out all the entities, what did we actually do? We created a database schema. That's actually what's happened here. These IDs are just foreign keys to other aggregates, to other aggregate routes. We've created a database schema. And this tweet from Alberto, who you might know from event storming, was perfect timing, which he said, exploring a business domain, focusing on data structures, will hide differences and highlight misleading similarities, ultimately nudging your design into unnecessary coupling. Now, whether you're doing explicitly or not, there is understanding about what the process and what that workflow is and what the behaviors are. And that's how ultimately you're coming up with these entities and that should be guiding you. And I was using that a little bit when I was saying that you host the dinner and that you have guests that make reservations and can do reviews on the dinner. These are all types of behaviors that you wanna expose and that's what's actually gonna guide the aggregates. If we go back to that menu aggregate that I had and think about the behaviors there, let's think about the events that might be omitted after any of these behaviors, behaviors were invoked. We have a menu created or a dinner created. Well, was a dinner created or was a dinner hosted? We have a menu reviewed, the item updated. Doing domain driven design doesn't mean that you have to be creating aggregates, you have to be creating entities and value objects. You could simply be still using the language within the domain when you're creating data models. If you don't need that consistency boundary, data models are fine in transaction scripts. You could still be using the, the domain language being used, for example, a menu, and still be calling everything that way appropriately, but you don't have to force an aggregate upon it. Looking back at all these entities again, and me making up what I think the behaviors of this system are and what actually is happening, I would probably assume that the complexity lies within a dinner, hosting a dinner, having reservations, canceling reservations, etc. And that may be where defining an aggregate could be appropriate. But without me actually defining the behaviors, I don't really know. The behaviors that you're exposing, that's what determines the data that you're going to be encapsulating within your entities and aggregates, not the other way around. If you're focusing on data structures, you'll likely end up with just really building behaviors that are about relationships. Would you like to see how I would design this by defining what the behaviors are and how that affects our actual overall design and what aggregates we actually have? Well, good, because I'm gonna create a follow-up video doing exactly that. Make sure to subscribe. If you enjoy topics like this and you wanna chat with almost 300 software developers about software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to comment. Please give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.